It breaks God's heart every time a false teacher victimizes someone in the name of God. Do a fruit inspection on every teacher you sit under. Look how a teacher handles the Bible, power, money, and people. And then only one question remains to be answered. What do you do if you conduct a fruit inspection of a teacher and he or she fails a test? What do you do? Well, Scripture would say, try to go to them. If that's appropriate and possible, go to them and make sure that you're not misperceiving or misjudging. Make sure your analysis is right. Talk it through. Get some questions answered. But if you do that and you just keep coming back to saying they're failing the test, how they handle the Word of God, power, money, people, just doesn't settle right with me, then you know what the Scriptures would say? Get out. Change teachers. Change classes. Change churches. Change TV or radio stations. Luke 6, 39 says that a blind guide will lead you into the ditch. So for self-preservation purposes, God says, I ask you, when you give a fruit inspection test to a teacher over a long period of time and the teacher fails the test, get out before you get had. And on the converse, what do you do if you conduct a fruit inspection test on a teacher for a long period of time and she or he passed the test? What do you do? You know what the Scripture says in 1 Timothy 5.17? A teacher who passes the fruit inspection test is worthy of double honor. Encourage that teacher. I've done that. I've written letters to teachers that I listen to regularly just to encourage them. Pray for that teacher. Defend that teacher against false criticism. Galatians 6, verse 6 says, make sure that that teacher has his physical or material needs met If that teacher's meeting your spiritual needs, then it's your responsibility to meet his physical and material needs. But the best thing, the best thing you can do for a teacher who's a true teacher, if you want to show him or her encouragement and love and support, the best thing is to apply the teaching that the teacher is giving you as a conduit through the Word of God. If you ask a true teacher, how can I say thank you? How can I convey to you how meaningful your teaching ministry has been? A true teacher will usually answer the same way. The teacher will say, just be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul and mind and strength. Enter the narrow gate, walk the narrow way and find life and tell other people about it. The teacher's most meaningful reward for his teaching is a group of responsive listeners who love God and are responsive and are compassionate and sensitive toward each other. That's a reward overflowing for a true teacher. And when you found a true teacher, like I have, and I I look back and teachers have been in my life, I just want to say hallelujah, because when you run across a true teacher like Sunday school teachers that were in my life, youth group teachers that were in my life, I thought about this back when I was just 13 years of age, we had a, a, a youth group leader. His name was Mike Bruton. I was thinking about him this past week, and I, I got misty-eyed when I thought about how God used that man in my life at just 13 years of age, how he introduced me to the presence of God. Huh. Even now I get misty-eyed when I think about it. When you find a good teacher, do a God, you're awesome. Because a teacher who handles the Bible accurate, the teacher who handles power constructively, the teacher who handles money honorably and handles people lovingly, just thank God for it. That teacher's a treasure, a treasure in the eyes of God, a treasure to the kingdom of God, a treasure to a ministry or a church, a treasure to you and to your family. He or she is a treasure, and you need to celebrate that. 